Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time. Today with a special episode. Today I want to compare the tiny DJI Spark drone with the all new mid-sized DJI Mavic Air drone and with the good old DJI Mavic Pro drone. We want to figure out which of the drones is the best for the money it costs, which drone you should finally end up buying. And by the way, product links can be found in the description below the video right now. Don't forget to leave a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to never ever miss any of my upcoming episodes again. And by the way, I in depth reviewed all three of those drones. You can find the links in the description below the video as well if you want to check out one of the drones more in depth. But right now, let's get started. What are the main differences? The first significant difference between these three drones is their transportation size. For example, you cannot fold the tiny DJI Spark's arms while the arms of the DJI Mavic Air and the arms of the DJI Mavic Pro drone can be folded, but still, when being folded down, which one is the smallest and the best for transportation? The DJI Spark drone is not only the lightest drone, weighing only 300 grams, but it measures only 14.3 by 14.3 by 5.5 centimeters. The Mavic Air is next in line weighing only 430 grams and measuring 6.1 by 7.8 by 14.4 centimeters. And finally the DJI Mavic Pro weighs 740 grams and measures 8.3 by 8.3 by 19.8 centimeters. If you're a traveler and you really need to pack your gear wisely then I can only recommend getting the DJI Mavic Air drone. Just take a look at its box. It is just tiny. Even the tinier DJI Spark drone has a bigger housing. Just take a look at it. The difference in size is quite noticeable. So I would say the winner in this category is the all new DJI Mavic Air drone. The in-flight safety is critical. Why? Basically because we first of all don't want to hurt anyone and secondly because we don't want to lose our drone and our investment and therefore all three drones are heavily packed with safety features. One of the most important features is the obstacle avoidance system. It basically means that if the drone is flying right into an obstacle, for example a wall, it would stop before hitting the wall. Automatically. The sensors detect that there is an obstacle and then the drone just stops automatically. Again, all three drones are equipped with sensors. The DJI Mavic Pro has two camera-based sensors at the front working at daytime with a range of about 30 meters. And the DJI Mavic Air drone features two camera-based daytime working obstacle avoidance cameras as well. They're both very advanced. And finally, we have the DJI Spark. And even though it is a tiny drone, it features obstacle avoidance, even though infrared-based only. The good thing about infrared is that infrared can be used during nighttime as well. But it has a total range of about 5 meters only, making this system a little weaker, but still in uh, such a small drone, this is pretty exciting. But what is big news? The all new DJI Mavic Air drone is the only drone that if we turn it around, it features two backwards facing cameras as well. And some people might say, okay, we just don't need that system. We can take care of the flight ourselves. But I must honestly say I saw even pros crashing backwards into obstacles. Sometimes it just happens there is a house there is a wall, there is a tree or something in the way and you just capture this beautiful shot and you, you just think like, okay, maybe one or two meters more and then it just happens. And by the way, um, that's how I crashed my first drone in Israel. Just take a look at the clip right now. I was flying backwards and I basically thought, okay, maybe I have one or two more meters and finally I ended up not having one or two extra meters and I almost lost the drone. So all of that would not have happened with the DJI Mavic Air drone. It is the only drone with frontal and backwards facing obstacle avoidance sensors, making this drone the safest of all three drones. When it comes to taking photos with the DJI drones, you must know that they're all pretty advanced. Even though the tiny DJI Spark is the only DJI drone not to feature RAW and RAW photography, even though it might sound super professional if you're a beginner. It's, it's not hard to use raw photos. You can get so much more out of your photos if you only shoot them in raw. That is why I cannot recommend the DJI Spark for photography. But these two drones, they both capture raw photos, which is pretty amazing. And the DJI Mavic Air drone even features some really cool new things. For example, you can take 360 degrees photos with 32 megapixels, you just tap on the screen and the drone automatically 
takes many, many photos and then stitches them together and finally you end up having awesome 360 degrees photos. I would say that when it comes to the photo functions, the DJI Mavic Air and the DJI Mavic Pro drone are more advanced than the DJI Spark drone. But the DJI Mavic Air drone just has more features aboard and is just a, a gorgeous drone. Just take a look at a few photos that I recently shot with the DJI Mavic Air drone on my travel through Israel. Just take a look. I think the photos are quite nice. You should know that I'm not a photographer. I'm rather the filmmaking type of a guy and I think these photos are quite nice. My recommendation, DJI Mavic Air and DJI Mavic Pro drone. Maybe the most relevant and most critical at the very same time category is the camera when it comes to recording video. Let me give you a very brief run through so that you can really determine which of the drones has the best camera. First of all, the gimbal, the stabilization system of your camera. While the DJI Spark has a two axis stabilized gimbal, which uh, makes it a lot stronger than most competitors in the very same uh, pricing range, both the DJI Mavic Air drone and the DJI Mavic Pro drone have a three axis stabilized camera. That is pretty fantastic because finally it means that even if you're flying in higher wind speeds or if you're taking right left turns or whatever, the camera is just gonna be perfectly stable like seen in the cinema, in real films. It's just really, really, really amazing. And uh, the technology inside those gimbals is so advanced, it is unbelievable. Next off is the maximum resolution. While the DJI Spark drone records footage at a maximum of full HD, both the DJI Mavic Air and the DJI Mavic Pro drone have a maximum resolution of 4K Ultra HD. Okay, you might say you don't need 4K because you just don't own a 4K screen. I can still only recommend filming in 4K. You will notice a difference. The difference is immense. It's, it's, it's really a huge difference. And next to that, if you are, for example, working at the computer uh, and if you're editing the footage, you can create a full HD project and then you have the 4K files recorded with these two drones that is a lot larger. That means that you can crop into the footage, zoom into the footage without losing quality. That is pretty fantastic. I just think that 4K is the future while Full HD is cool, but it's more toy-like these days and it is outdated a little bit. But the main difference is the bitrate. The bitrate might not really sound very cool and very spectacular as resolution and megapixels and all of that stuff, but the uh, bitrate is really important when it comes to covering details, when it comes to saving details when saving video files. If your drone records footage at a very low bitrate, it basically means that many, many details will be lost, while if your camera is capable of recording at a very high bitrate, it of course needs more storage space, but at the very same time, it really records many details, making the final films, the results look cinematic. You have many details in the shadows and in the highlights. It is just insane. So let me cover the specs. 24 megabits with the tiny DJI Spark drone. I think that is okay, but again, it's more of, let's say, a beginner camera. Uh, while the DJI Mavic Pro already beats most of the competitors with its 60 megabits camera, which is pretty cool. 60 megabits per second make the look of the videos that you can record with the Mavic Pro drone already very cinematic. But right now comes the beast and the beast is smaller than the Mavic Pro this time because it's the Mavic Air. The Mavic Air records its video footage at 100 megabits per second, putting it in line with the more expensive DJI Phantom 4 Pro drone that we don't even have on the table today. It is more expensive, it is bulkier, it is bigger. Actually, I love it. But still, this tiny drone, the DJI Mavic Air drone, records video files at 100 megabits per second. That is amazing. That is, for filmmakers, a real argument of getting this drone. It is not only tiny, but the camera is massive and the files that you record are so detailed. And if you want to take a closer look at the original files recorded with the Spark, with the Mavic Air and with the Mavic Pro drone, you can download them for free at tomstechtime.com slash drone footage and then you can put them into your editor and you can start editing and you can start messing around with the files. And I can only say that the Mavic Air drone plays in the Champions League while the Mavic Pro is, uh, yeah, well, one league below. While the Spark drone is a 
a cute beginner drone when it comes to the camera, but all I can say is that the camera of the DJI Mavic Air drone is really a purchasing argument for everyone who aims to create cinematic looking shots. Really fantastic. Were you ever in that situation that you drove outdoors somewhere to a very beautiful looking location or you were on holiday and then you raise up the drone, you start the recording and then you finally notice, oh wow, the drone isn't recording because I just forgot the micro SD card. Or you were, I don't know, traveling somewhere and the micro SD card is just full and you just can't record anything anymore. That just happened to me in Switzerland. It was such a beautiful scenery and I just could not continue taking photos and recording video files. The tiny micro SD cards can really get us into some trouble. But the DJI Mavic Air drone is the first DJI drone to not only feature a micro SD card input, but next to the micro SD card input, the tiny DJI Mavic Air drone even features an internal storage, which is amazing. The first DJI drone with internal storage, it is eight gigabytes only. I would have been happy if it was maybe 32 gigabytes or something like that, but still with eight gigabytes, that can really save your day. This is really a game changer, I must say. I don't wanna see any new DJI drones in the future without internal storage anymore. This can really prevent a lot of trouble and a lot of frustration. So internal storage built into the DJI Mavic Air drone is just fantastic. That is one of the main reasons even why I love this tiny new drone. It is amazing. Internal storage, saving our days. The flight time is again a critical issue. For how long can you stay airborne with your drone as every flight minute counts? There is a clear pattern when it comes to the drones. The larger the drone, the longer it can stay airborne. The shortest flight time offers the DJI Spark with approximately 16 minutes of flight. But just take a look at how tiny the battery is. Next of is the all new DJI Mavic Air drone that can stay airborne for up to 18 minutes. And finally, with the longest flight time is the DJI Mavic Pro drone with about 23 minutes, making it really a beast in flight. Have you heard of APAS, Advanced Pilot Assistance System? That is something that DJI built into the DJI Mavic Air drone. The newest drone has one feature that the other drones don't have at all. It basically means that if you're flying right at an obstacle and you're still pulling the stick of your remote controller forwards, meaning that usually it would either crash or the drone would, because of course it has obstacle avoidance, just stop. In this case, with the APAS mode turned on, the drone flies in a straight line, then flies around the obstacle and continues its flight safely. That is a pretty fantastic mode, I must say. It can really save some time and it can save the drone. It is not like a must-have mode. I think you can freely and safely fly with the DJI Mavic Pro, for example, that really stops you in front of obstacles. But having the all-new APAS mode is quite sweet with the DJI Mavic Air drone. I don't want to open a big discussion, but I know that the next topic is critical and very emotional. I'm talking about the maximum flight range of these three drones. While the DJI Mavic Pro is capable of flying out as far as seven kilometers, these two drones are limited to about four kilometers maximum distance. I must say that I am completely fine with four kilometers because in most countries you are anyways not allowed to fly out of sight, especially if you're focusing on filmmaking, if you're focusing on taking photos, you just don't need it. The only cool thing about the seven kilometers of the Mavic Pro drone is that the signal is incredibly strong. Meaning that if you're, for example, at a distance of 1.2 kilometers away from you, uh, the signal is just perfect. You just have the perfect live feed on your smartphone you just see everything, everything is fast and everything is safe. There is no interference. While, of course, if there is a lot of interference, uh, the signal of the Mavic Air drone and the DJI Spark drone could already suffer at a distance of about 1.2 kilometers. That is just an example. I can only say Mavic Pro is the winner. The Mavic Air drone, in my eyes, found a good solution for both the pricing of the drone and for having a strong and long lasting signal. There will be more differences, of course, to cover when taking a look at these three drones. For example, that the camera of the tiny DJI Spark drone is not protected by a cover at all. While you can use a cover for the DJI Mavic Pro drone, even though it consists out of two pieces and putting it on is always a little, it's a hassle, honestly said. And sometimes you just forget to remove one of the parts and then you get a gimbal overload error. All of that happens and I think 
Well protected is the DJI Mavic Air drone. It features a gimbal cover that you can put on and then the camera is safe and it's just super easy to put on. It just takes maybe three or four seconds. This uh, is really a great advantage. Next to that, all three drones kind of uh, can handle a gesture mode while the gesture mode is really basic on the DJI Mavic Pro drone. The DJI Spark drone can already do a lot of things. For example, you can do the Jedi movement. You can with your palm just uh, move the drone all around the place or you can take photos or videos. But on the DJI Mavic Air drone, uh, the gesture mode has really been improved heavily. So if you are into moving your drone around or uh, doing crazy uh, stuff with uh, the uh, with your palms only, with your hands only, then you should go with the DJI Mavic Air drone. But honestly said, none of these features seems to be really, I don't know, really important when it comes to the main differences. That is, by the way, why I did not cover this in depth. And right now, let's head over to the last main difference, which is the pricing. The cheapest drone is, of course, the DJI Spark drone, followed by the DJI Mavic Air drone. And the most expensive is the DJI Mavic Pro drone. Finally, my recommendation clearly goes to the DJI Mavic Air drone, not only because it costs less than $800, that is amazing for a 4K fully stabilized camera drone made by DJI, durable and uh, so many features aboard, the quick shot modes that have been enhanced where the drone autonomously flies around you and captures amazing shots of you. It is an amazing drone. I must say it is the best drone since a while that DJI has published in my eyes. That's a personal opinion only. By the way, you can check out the current pricing of all three drones by clicking at the product links in the description below the video because the prices might have already changed since the day that I filmed this video and I don't wanna spam you with wrong information. So just feel free to click at those links right now. Don't forget to maybe watch the in-depth review of the DJI Mavic Air, my favorite drone, or one of the other drones. Again, all links can be found in the description below the video. Don't forget to leave a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to never ever miss any of my upcoming episodes. Again, stay tuned and join my Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Tom's Tech Time. Or if you only wanna follow my work on Facebook, the link would be facebook.com slash Tom's Tech Time. What else could I share with you? Instagram, instagram.com slash Tom's Tech Time YT. Stands for YouTube, because someone already registered slash Tom's Tech Time, which is a hassle. And Tom's Tech Time.com, the blog, the best drone deals, so much more stuff, free downloads. Yeah, don't forget to download the original clips of all three drones. You should take a look at that right now. Bye bye, enjoy the day and enjoy a safe flight with whatever DJI drone you finally choose.